Today's lesson is chapter 3, lesson 12, on pages 227 to 200, through 230. Our objective is I can interpret the remainder to a division problem. So very similar to our last lesson, so you should have some good information, but this is going to be a little bit more in-depth. Our vocabulary is remainder. Question 1. There are three ways that I can interpret the remainder. They are 1. Round it up. 2. Add it as a fraction or a decimal. Or 3. And you'll have to figure that out. Question 2. If Mrs. Folio has 15 feet of licorice and wants to give her two daughters the same amount, how much do her girls get? And then we are going to watch this video. Okay, and we're not going to watch the whole video, but I did leave that link up on the, um, on the first initial page in case you want more examples. But I think the clip we watch will give you enough examples. Be interpreting the remainder. There are three ways to interpret the remainder. First, you can choose to ignore the remainder. This means that you are not using the remainder in the answer at all. Second is to interpret the remainder as a fraction or decimal. This means that you are including the remainder in the answer and reporting it as a fraction or a decimal. Lastly, you can round the remainder up. This means that you are adding one more to the quotient or the answer so that everyone or everything will be included. The first choice is ignoring the remainder. Here is an example. Your mom gives you $20 to buy songs from iTunes. Each song costs 99 cents. How many songs can you buy? First, we would do some division. 20 divided by 99 equals 20 remainder 20. So we need to decide what to do with that remainder. We can buy 20 songs, but we have that 20 cents left. We cannot buy another song for 20 cents because each song is 99 cents. So what would we do with that 20 cents? We would just ignore it. So this is an example of where you would ignore the remainder. A tip for ignoring the remainder. You're going to use ignore the remainder when you cannot easily divide the remainder and when rounding up doesn't make sense. So this wasn't an easily, this isn't easily divisible. So that's why it fits this rule. And also we couldn't round the remainder up. So in this circumstance, you're going to ignore the remainder. The next choice is to interpret the remainder as a fraction or a decimal. Here is an example. Four friends go out for ice cream. The total cost is $18 and they want to split it equally. How much should each person pay? So first we would take that $18 and divide it by four people and we would get an answer of four remainder two. What does that two mean? This means that each person paid $4, but there is still $2 that needs to be paid. So what are we gonna do with that extra $2? If we wanna split the bill equally, we're then going to have to split up that $2 between the four people. So $2 split into four groups is 50 cents. We have two quarters, two quarters, two quarters, two quarters. 50, a dollar, a dollar fifty, two dollars. So each person on top of the four dollars they're already paying is going to also pay 50 cents. So each person will pay 450. So what we've done is we reported the answer as a decimal because 4.50 is a decimal. Here's a tip for interpreting the remainder as a fraction or decimal. This is often going to be used with money, food, and measurement. You're going to interpret the remainder as a fraction or decimal when you can easily split the remainder and it makes sense to do so. So here we could easily split that $2 into four groups and it's going to make sense to do that because the four friends wanted to split the cost equally. The last option is to round the remainder up. Here is an example. A group of 200 students are going on a field trip and each bus can hold 60 students. How many buses are needed for the field trip? So first we're going to do 200 divided by 60 because we have 200 students and 60 can fit on each bus. This is going to give us an answer of 3 remainder 20. 
meaning that we've got three groups of 60 students, but we still have 20 students left. One bus holds 60, two buses will hold 120, and three buses hold 180. But there are still those 20 kids who need a seat on a bus. So we have to, in this case, round up the remainder to get our answer. And our answer is going to be four buses. We cannot leave those 20 people without a bus or they would get left behind from the field trip. So a good tip for rounding the remainder up, you're going to use rounding whenever you can't leave people, animals, or things out. In this case, we couldn't leave those 20 kids out. So we needed to round the remainder up. All right, so let's take a look at it in your book. I am on page 227. So our first example is a state park has 257 evergreens to plant equally in nine different areas. How many evergreens are planted in each area? What does this remainder represent? So your first step is going to be to divide this 257 by 9. So you're going to go through this process as we've been talking about. So it talks you through, you know, 9 doesn't go into 2, so we're going to look at 9 into 25. How many times does 9 go into 25? And we get, let me pull up the pen, it never seems to pull up. Um, okay, well, I'll just plug this in, 2, and then we multiply 9 times 2 and get 18. 25 minus 18, subtract, so we have 7 left. Compare, is 7 less than 9? Yes. So now we can bring down. So then we have this 9 goes into 77, and we divide that step. So you work it out, and you get 28 remainder 5. So then you have to think about, what do I do with that remainder? Well, in this case, it means there's 5 evergreens left over. So we have to interpret that. So you have to think about it realistically in this case. So remember from the video, she talked about the different ways that you would have to do that. Okay, so here's another example. In this case, there's 174 people or guests invited to a dinner. And each table seats eight guests. So how many tables do we need for this dinner party? 174 divided by eight. Work it out. Eight doesn't go into one, so we look at eight into 17. Well, eight goes into 17 twice. Multiply, eight times two. We get 16. 17 minus 16, we get 1. Okay, so then we compare. 1 is less than 8. 8 goes into 14. Now, 1 time, and that is 8. 14 minus 8, we get 6. Okay, so 6 is our remainder. So now we have 21 remainder 6. So now we have to think about what does this mean in terms of our problem. So in this case, that means there's six guests who don't have a seat or don't have anywhere to sit for dinner. So that means if we're interpreting that, that would be a case where we need to round up because we don't want to leave people out. So remember, she said that was a tip for thinking about when to round up. So we would have to have another table because we have six people that need a table still. Okay, so go ahead and look at your homework helper if you need another example, which is on page 231. And um, this gives you another good example of how to interpret that remainder. All right, so let's look back at our two questions. So question one, if you can't remember, I would look back at this video. So type in this link and watch the video again, and you'll get that third step. And then question two, answer that one.